welcome to my channel if you've clicked on this video you're probably new to gaming and i love that for you it's the best hobby okay it's welcome to the beautiful world of cozy gaming you're gonna love it i promise as you can tell from my intro and the title and the thumbnail <laughs> i'm going to be recommending you some cozy beginner friendly games i have split them into three categories depending on your level also i didn't plan to talk about it in this video but i thought why not if you're just starting out what should you buy Nintendo switch steam deck Ooh, you can see the tripod hi <laughs> steam deck or a gaming pc or a playstation like so i started officially gaming back in 2012 with a gaming laptop and up until 2021 i did use a gaming laptop i changed it three times in the span of nine years and that's because gaming laptops are even if they have the same specs with a gaming pc they do get old quicker they have cooling issues at least the ones i had and they were all from good brands would i recommend buying a gaming laptop i mean if you need to be mobile all the time sure but also you can also buy handheld gaming pc so after that, in 2021, I did switch to a gaming PC and I think I can use my current PC for like four more years at least. I'm very happy with it. And then I have a Switch, which I bought when it first launched. You can... Hi. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't play that much on it, even though I don't regret buying it at all. But I only play Switch exclusive games on this one and... If there is a game that is available on both Steam and Nintendo eShop, I just buy it from Steam because it's always cheaper. And they usually go on sale on Steam, whereas they don't go on sale on the Switch. But I do not regret buying this at all. It is worth it for Animal Crossing alone. So, also like Zelda, Mario, it is worth it, I think. And also, it's just really cute, light and easy to hold. Whereas this is a big chunky boy, like it is hard to hold. And whenever I play on it, I put a pillow or something so I can rest my hand while playing on it, you know, because it gets heavy. I will get into the games very soon. Like I didn't plan to talk about this part, but I felt it can be nice if you're completely new. Honestly, if I was just starting out, my preference would be the Steam Deck. It's just, I think it's just superior. If you don't like the shape, if you don't like the color of it, you can just put a skin and make it cute. I personally didn't almost care for like skins, even though I love them, I'm just too lazy. But I've seen girlies with a pink Steam Deck and it looks so cute. So if the color is the only thing that's stopping you because it's not like cute, then you can completely fix that. I think this is the way to go. I have over a thousand games on Steam and there are so many deals there. Now we can start talking about the games. So if you're absolutely new to gaming, first category is games that require absolutely no knowledge of any mechanics whatsoever games i put in this category are mostly or maybe even all of them are point and click games which means you mostly play with the keyboard and you don't even need to touch no that's that's the opposite which means you mostly play with the mouse and you don't even need to touch the keyboard the most challenging games you can find on this list are puzzle games and that's because they require big brain okay so let's get into the list first up we have florence florence is a very cute little game where we play as florence <laughs> she feels very stuck in her life she fell into this routine and she just keeps she feels like she keeps living the same day over and over again that sounded a bit magical, it has nothing like that, it's nothing like that, it's just 
psychologically she is she feels like she's living the same day over and over again and then she meets a cello player and they fall in love and we watch their story unfold it is it is a very sweet game it's a very short little story that can show you how meaningful games can be and how games can give you so many emotions in the span of 10 minutes just the art of game making i think it's a good beginning I even made my mom play it so that should tell you something she has no knowledge of games okay our second game is wenba in wenba we mostly cook indian dishes it is a story game again i think the story was about a family an indian family who moved to canada and the kid started to forget his indian roots i think the sound design in this game was so 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 good when you cook the onions you can hear them sizzling it was it's a really good game you go through the old family recipe book and since it's old, some of the pages are missing, they're not complete. So it's like a puzzle, you have to figure out how to cook it. And I really like the fact they made it like puzzly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not just cooking, you also have to figure out how to cook. I will also be writing down all the platforms you can play these games on and the prices. So okay to better explain it i'm going to be reading from the steam page wenba is a short narrative cooking game where you play as an indian mom who immigrates to canada with her family in the 80s cook various dishes and restore lost recipes hold branching conversations and explore south indian food in this story about family love and loss cute oh no we only talked about two games so far and the video is already 15 minutes recording i think i have to be like quicker <laughs> because i have i have like so many more games to, i need to talk about next up we have sticky business and you just run a sticker shop you design your own stickers and you ship them <laughs> okay i'm trying to keep it short so that's it it's very cute and then we have Coffee Talk 1 and Coffee Talk 2. They just released their second game. Coffee Talk is a visual novel game where you specially make the drinks and you become friends with the customers. They tell you their story while sipping their cozy little coffee or tea. <laughs> Some customers come in and they say, I want the standards. And since they did come, three times before and they always had the same drink you have to actually pay attention and remember what they order each time so you can serve them i would recommend playing the first game first because characters in the second game are the same and you watch their story unfold i did personally like the first game more than the second one but the writer of the first game passed away during the development of the second game i think so he was so talented so yeah coffee talk is another great game that you do not need to do anything you just read perfect cozy dialogue and you just from time to time you just make coffee the next game we have is unpacking it is a game about unpacking. <laughs> so we play as a girl through the stages of her life, like when she moves into college, when she moves in with someone, when she breaks up with that someone. It doesn't directly tell you a story, but you can see the story develop through the items she unpacks, which is, I think, so cute. To give you an example, like when she moves in with someone, the teddy bear she keeps for all her life has to go like under the bed or it has to be tucked away somewhere 
because there is just no space for her cute little teddy bear in that relationship. And it's the little details like this that makes this game so good and again only thing you do is click 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 move the item to where you want to place it and that's it next up we have when the past was around which is a puzzle game it is a very sad game like bittersweet it's just very cute gives you the emotions as you can tell most games in this list touch you in the heart because that was my goal so you can see how many emotions little games can make you feel this is a story about love moving on letting go and the joy and the pain of everything in between our next game is a new life this is one of my favorite games of all time it made me cry it's only about two hours long to see all the endings it has to offer which are five endings in total to summarize it it's a game about a relationship and you can choose how it ends with your actions and it is a very short game like i said so just go for the ends our next game which is also the final game on this super beginner friendly category is a little to the left so a little to the left is a satisfying puzzle game where you have to organize things to give you an example look at the pillows behind me you can see one one and then one of this color and then one one and then it continues with this <laughs> so it the next pillow has to be this you know <laughs> It's a game like that where you have to pay attention to the thing you're seeing in front of you and you have to fix the thing that's wrong with it. It's perfect, so satisfying and yeah. <laughs> okay, the next category we have is if you've played some games before and you have some of the basic knowledge like how to walk and how to move around and explore the environment. I know that sounds very basic but it's important. <laughs> So the first game here is Fresh Start, which is a game where you are in a post-apocalyptic world. That's a hard word for a non-native. You are in a post-apocalyptic world and it's very dirty and you have a... what do you call it? And you clean all the garbage around and you... So you can restore the nature and the animals come back and the art style is very cute. And then we have a short hike. It is one of my favorite games again. Actually, I have lots of favorites on this list. Coffee Talk was one of my favorites. Florence, Wenba, When the Past Was Around. These are all on my favorite game list. <laughs> we can make a separate video about my favorites sometime. Okay, short hike. So in this game, I'm not exactly sure how the story starts. We go to our grandparents' house, I think, and we are expecting big news from somewhere and we have to find cell phone signal. We don't have signal anywhere in the towns so we have to hike up to the mountain but we're not strong enough to do that so we go around we talk to people we gather strength and we slowly make our way up and don't think of it like you have to climb a mountain it's more like this is a town and you go all around it doing quests and upgrading yourself <laughs> and and in the end you can go and climb to your main point and it has lots of light platforming where you can fly and jump and, <laughs> and it gives you so much freedom it's not linear at all you can do whatever you want first but it's really good <laughs> Then we have Lake. We play as Meredith and we are a corporate girly. We are obsessed with our work. And then we visit our parents in their little town. 
it's a really cute town and something happens and we have to take over our dad's job for like a few days i think they go on a vacation or something the parents and we have to take over our dad's job which is a mailman so we go around the town driving his little truck it's not little <laughs> it's not a little truck at all and we become the mailman for a little while we wake up we go on the truck we choose our own routes 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 no how to go <laughs> and we play the radio while we drive around it makes it very immersive and realistic i think the soundtrack was really good as well we also of course have a story we can even make choices that change the ending of the game and it was just a very cute game next up we have alba a wildlife adventure i've just played this recently honestly i didn't love the game that much but i'm not gonna lie it was very cozy it was very informative so we have a wildlife guidebook take pictures of the animals mostly birds but there are also Animals like rabbits, cats, dog, fishes, I think, like a dolphin. There are a variety of animals. There is also a little story about restoring the nature in this little island. I think it takes place in Spain. It was a cute game, not the best ever. But if you're interested in wildlife, or if you have a kid, I think if I play this game as a kid, I would love it. But as of now, I don't love it. <laughs> and then we have Lemon Cake, which is a cozy chaos game. It is cozy for some reason, but it's also so chaotic. It's like Diner Dash, kind of, if you've played that when you were a kid. You have a little bakery and each day you wake up, you go to your bakery, you prepare whatever is on your menu that day and you put it on the displays. People come in, they can either pick it up from the display case or they sit down and order to eat and you have to clean their table but also you have to keep baking new things because new customers keep coming in and then the rush hour starts of course and then you can also have a little garden in the back of the cafe where you can grow your own plants to put on your cakes you can also have i think chickens and a cow and even a beehive and even a freezer to make ice creams then of course you have to go back to the garden and you have to water your plants or they dry and they don't give fruits anymore you have to manage so many things at once but it is really addicting and it is so cozy somehow then we have untitled goose game which is a puzzle game where we play as a mischievous little goose and our goal in this game is to cause chaos upon the humanity <laughs> no not upon the humanity just mess with people it is a short game about three to four hours if i remember correctly and that was the final game on this category and next up we have another category this category is for the people who got through the first two phases and now are more confident in their gaming skills they believe they can tackle more mechanics other than walking and stuff like some easy platforming or crafting things building things or some games don't really tell you where to go what to do they're not specific enough but maybe at this stage you've played enough games to instinctively know what to do where to go like how to progress the game so to start off this category we have one of the most popular cozy games out there which is stardew valley i know this is always recommended as a super beginner friendly game but i started gaming in 2012 and i played stardew valley for the first time in 2017 and i had no idea what to do where to go i had no idea because the game doesn't tell you the game doesn't give you 
the goals the game doesn't tell you oh now go buy this seed and plant that and water that and then you have to go to the mines and you have to do this the game doesn't tell you any of that so back when i first started playing it i was really really confused so i just stopped after a few hours but then i don't know what happened i guess i gained more experience and i went back to it after like a year and then something clicked and i became obsessed with it but yeah i think you have to have some knowledge of at least farming games prior to playing stardew valley then we have smushy come home we play as a little mushroom in this one and we do some easy platforming and we try to go back to our family and there are so many side quests so many collectibles you also learn so many cool facts about mushrooms we have a little spreadsheet about them anytime we encounter new mushrooms it's a very cute game okay we're getting closer to the end i'm really tired i've been filming for 45 minutes <clears throat> then we have my time at prussia and my time at sandrock so just like Stardew Valley, I was also really confused when I started playing my time at Portia back when it first came out on Early Access. I remember specifically like assembling things really confused me, but maybe it's not about the game being hard. Maybe I was just not that bright. <laughs> or maybe you just need some knowledge of building and assembling games prior to playing this. And I remember, once you get the hang of it, of this mechanic, assembling things, it becomes really easy but never boring. And in my like 70 hour playthrough, I didn't get bored even once. And the combat is not challenging at all. There are so many different little mechanics in the game. You can get married, you can go find artifacts. And if you have some gaming experience beforehand, I think you're gonna easily figure out where to go, what to do. And my time at Sandrock is the new game from this series that came out last year. So playing this, I was of course way more experienced as a gamer. And I also knew the mechanics of the first game, so it was way easier to get into this game. It's basically the same mechanics, my time at Porsche and my time at Sandrock basically the same game with different environments i would say of course there are improvements but they're very very similar and that's why they're both on the list you can play whichever you want first like the story is not connected or anything you can choose whichever environment you like first i do recommend both these games very highly they're so addictive and really fun and they make you forget <laughs> The time so maybe don't play them if you're if you have so many responsibilities but if you need something to suck all your time give them a chance well actually a lot of the farming games can be added to this category but there's a lot of them so I'm not going to try to add them all also if you would like a farming game specific video maybe like a tier list of all the farming games I've played you can let me know in the comments and I'll try to make one. Next up, we have Arcade Paradise. And in this one, we run an arcade slash a laundromat. So people come in to wash their clothes. And while they're waiting for their clothes to wash, we also have an arcade in the back room <laughs> where they can go and play games while they're waiting. It is really cute. We manage the laundromat. We go every morning, we clean the trash. If the toilet gets blocked, we have to unblock it. <laughs> and people drop their clothes off in a basket and we have to put them in the washing machine and we have to collect them when it's time and meanwhile of course we can play all the games on our arcade machines <laughs> what we also have to manage how much does the game cost like we can we can manage all those little settings as well and as we earn more money from our laundry business we also order new machines that we can play on I don't even care about the customers i just want to play on the new machines the final game we have is spirit fair which is one of the one of the saddest cozy games the most bittersweet 
it's I'm hugging myself right now. So we play as a spirit bearer who transports soul from one world to the other world. And of course we create a bond with them. Meanwhile, they all have a final wish and we try to make their final wish come true so they can leave the world in peace. And it's just really sad. <laughs> And of course, you can discover so many islands. There are platforming mechanics in this as well. You gain so many new abilities. And then so you can go back to the other islands. And you can climb places you couldn't climb before. So you can collect more collectibles and treasures and stuff. And also, you have to manage your fairy. You have to cook. You have to grow plants. You have to and new rooms it's very cute it's again one of the most popular cozy games out there and that's for a reason and that was all i hope you have added so many games to your list and please 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 let me know if you play any of these and you like them and how you like them it took me such a long time to make this list exactly right for beginners because I really want more people to join this community and share my love for gaming. So I really wanted to give the best possible recommendations so you can easily get into gaming and see all its beauty. And that's it from me for today. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe. It would really help me. And bye, see you in another video.